Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, catch your breath in the valley. Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Sweet. Thank you guys for joining. Is anybody else from the band joining before we start? Uh, yes. Josh is, is supposed to be joining the the superstar, the singer. Okay, we'll we'll get we'll get him in here in uh, in just a bit. But while we're waiting, can you gentlemen uh, properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. I'm uh, in, in Texas, kind of close to San Antonio, Spring Branch. Um, cool. but my name's Onel, and I don't know. What would you like to know? <laughs> Uh, well, first, I guess, can you guys drop all your social media uh, links so everybody knows where to follow you if they uh, when, once they enjoy your music? I know it's like at CYB, oh, yeah. but I think it's a couple different ones from there. Yeah. Um, my hair looks, looks like a mess. Hold on. Holy shit. What the <laughs> hell? Yeah, see, that's why I, I was, you know, skeptical about the video. You're good. You're a well, handsome lad. It's no hair. worries. You're a handsome my lad. Fine. Um, uh, yeah, this on catch a breath on all socials is at cyb underscore tx that's our, our twitter our instagram um and then on facebook it's just facebook.com slash catch your breath tx are you guys both originally from texas or did you uh, did you move there from somewhere else yeah born and raised here man yeah born and raised in austin austin exactly south austin yeah, yeah. So I was kind of doing like a deep dive today, a little bit of research, so I didn't come in here not knowing anything. And I obviously we've heard Dial Tone a bunch of times. I think that was the first song we heard of yours. As I'm going through the list, it's slowly getting heavier and heavier. I was unaware there was so much screaming in your guys' music because I kind of had only jammed the first two before. Uh, was Dial Tone kind of a... It seems like Dial Tone is a little bit of a change of pace as far as not being as heavy, more of somewhat of a radio track. What what was the thought process behind going going about that particular record? Uh, for Dial Tone, for Dial Tone. Like, how, like like how like vastly different it is from like our, our older stuff from the past. Exactly, um, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, honestly, you just kind of went in and like yeah made something, man. There wasn't really much. We, we weren't trying to be one thing or the other. It just we we uh, reconnected with a friend, and um, we just sat down and we had a, a couple of demos. We, we we worked out beforehand and went went through a few and decided on one, and then kind of just went from there. But it it was just kind yeah. of happened. <laughs> gotcha. Josh has Josh has arrived. Uh, his camera and mic is off. Also. <gasps> Uh, while he gets set up real quick, I will spin dial tone real fast so we can so everybody can hear it, and then we'll come back with some more questions. Chat's saying that I've not heard the demo version, but Chat's saying the demo version is vastly different than the final version. Is that something that you would say when the producer finally gets his hands on it, he's kind of like, I think you should do this, do this, arrange this, this way, or how does it? Yeah. How does a song go from a demo to the final version that we hear? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so. Yeah, so it's all it's all a process. On oh, the lights, it's too bright. Um, it, it's just like whatever the, our producer, like who we we trust with our lives, and whatever he, you know, they think is uh the best, and we just you know send them the ideas, and they, we pick apart those ideas, and what stays stays, and what changes changes. It's just like it's, it's all like it's it's it. We took days. <laughs> we we we. It's hard uh, to not have demo items, man. Do you always yeah, use the same longer. producer? Do you always use the same producer? Or like, do you have like a, a go-to guy that you're always working with, yeah. or do you kind of jump around different? Well, yeah. Well, now we do, right? Not now we do, but when we first started, our first producer was Kyle Lodell, and he, he, you know, he's like a veteran in the in the space. He did like Motionless and White and um, Kind of the Empire back in the day with Drew Folk, and then um, and then we went to. Uh, Joshua Landry, which he's also known as a uh, low spirit on TikTok, mm -hmm. and um, and now we work with Curtis Martin, 
and he's a longtime good friend of ours. Um, he's he's a he's a, he's an upcoming guy. He he engineered the new Backstreet Boys record and working on some One K Rock stuff and what? some Ed Sheeran stuff. That's gotta be so, a good payday, I would imagine. Backstreet Boys, damn. Yeah, he, he yeah he used to work at a multi million dollar studio in Vegas, but now he's independent, doing his own thing. Oh yeah, good for him. Josh, are you are you uh, always from Texas, or did you move move there? Um, and were you in a previous project before Catch Your Breath? Uh, no, I wasn't always in Texas. Uh, I I am I was born and raised in Oklahoma. Um. <clears throat> what what, what got you to go down south to to end up in Texas? Uh, the band. Really? So d- give me that story. Yeah. So the band, the band is the band, and then somehow they hear Tell them the your thing, voice. Yeah. How how does this process the happen? All right. So the full thing is, I was in uh, a local band here in Oklahoma back when I was in high school. Um, we were together for a long time. Um, that eventually went nowhere. And then it's just like really hard to find outside of like one dude here. It was like really hard to find good, solid musicians, uh, that, that understood like both the industry and could play, you know? Um, so I went on like a dry spell for a long time. So my buddy Bradley hit me up. And he was like, hey, man, you still doing the music thing? And I was like, no, no, I'm super depressed about it, too. And he was like, well, hey, I, I got this friend named Curtis. Uh, he's he's helping out his buddy put together this you know, metal band down in Austin, Texas called Inertia. If you if you want to, I can like throw your name at him. And he threw my name at him and like nothing happened for like a few months. And then he finally hit me up one day to come try out for this band. And that is when I recorded the song Frontline. And that was my tryout for the band, was me recording Frontline. And they he sent it to the, to the band, <clears throat> and the rest was history. The band was basically like, yeah, we got to get you to Texas as soon as possible. We got to get this thing going, because you're our guy, and we're ready to go. But then you're not in inertia. Right, right. So that was a whole thing with this band. I think, I think, where were they from? Teddy, California, something like that. Uh, wait. wait their nurse, wait, wait, their nurse that I know is from Australia. Yeah. So yeah. So we we had like a name dispute with either. I don't think it was that band. I think it was some band from California that was like not big at all. But they were like, "Nope, you're gonna pay us for the name, or we're gonna sue you." And we were like, "Screw that." So you just came. We just so- changed it. I got you. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Fellas, do you play do you play video games? And if so, what's some of the best video games ever made, in your opinion? I would play the shit out of Halo Infinite, man. Me and my <laughs> wife, I play some things doubles and shit. Hell yeah. Mm. I'm a big fan of like Assassin's Creed or like MMORPGs. I played Skyrim for way longer than I'd like to admit. Me too. Probably seven different consoles <laughs> I played Skyrim on. Yeah. Like, oh, it's on this I one. I, I gotta get it. <laughs> yeah, people see my account and they're like, "Wow, you put six hundred hours into Skyrim," and I'm just like, "Yeah, that's think, a lot." I think I got more than that, to be honest with you. But yeah, that game's that game's addicting. Yeah, just my what about it for yeah. yourself, Teddy? Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a competitive FPS player. I play a uh, Valorant competitively. Uh, not not so much in the past few months since since the band's like been super busy with so much so much things going on and we've been doing so many things mm. and um haven't been haven't been playing much but no valorant is like my main game at the moment for sure i'm a daily cod mobile player uh i would say borderline professional borderline nice uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fellas, I do want to do some trivia with you in a little bit. That's why I asked about the hot sauce. I'm going to let you pick the topic for the trivia. But if I am able to stump you, hopefully one of you guys brought hot sauce. This is not required. Just adds a little fun. I'll take a big old swig of it. If I'll do it with you either way. But if you stump me, I'll take a huge swig of hot sauce. And I've got 16 of them right here to my side. Damn. But to do the trivia, okay. I need I need a little information about you. What 
movie or TV show, would you say you guys have pick one, please? Not everybody a different answer. What what one movie or TV show have you seen the most? You've seen this movie so many times, you know it almost line for line, where if I ask you something about it, you will not get stumped. Anchorman. Anchorman, hell yeah. Oh no, what would you say? <laughs> um, it has to be a movie. Or a TV show. It could be Simpsons, South Park, uh, Terminator, it doesn't matter. Oh man. Um, I'm... <laughs> I don't Anchorman's know if I a, this, a, really it's friends. a good start. Anchorman's a good start, I would say. I have like trivia right, cards go... the Friends TV show, and I think I only missed one card. Oh, what was it again? So what? I watched the crap out of Friends. Out of Friends, okay. Give me a yeah. second on Anchorman, and then maybe I'll do one on Friends also. But uh, I do want to play Fade. Fade seems like it could be the fan favorite. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Or is that just the algorithm making that one like a popular one? Uh, no, I would it's say, yeah, I would say both, actually. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what's up. Josh, let's play Fade. Give me a second to find some trivia. <laughs> All right, here we go. Anchorman trivia now. In the movie Anchorman, we all know Ron Burgundy works at a TV station. What is the four-letter call sign of the TV station that he works at. K something something NBA. something. I don't know. That that's that's I got I got you. <laughs> he, he said he said you know what I don't know it. <laughs> Hell yeah. K V W N is the answer. I'll do some uh, bacon Argentinian bacon hot sauce, and um, I need to find some trivia for friends. And but uh, let's play. I think Criminal was the one. Either it was either Criminal or Ricochet that seemed like uh, one of the heavier ones that I was jamming earlier. Which one would you say is heavier of these two? Ricochet uh, is heavier. Ricochet. What is what is Ricochet about from a lyrical perspective? Oh oh. Uh, well, it's a it's a morbid. sensitive topic. Are we allowed? To, are we allowed to discuss or not allowed? No no we're allowed to discuss. Uh, trigger warning. You really want to. Yeah, a trigger warning. Um, Ricochet is like a continuation of like Fade, where Fade is like just a song about like struggling and um, with like just whatever you struggle with, and you know you you just want to like the lyrics fade to nothing. Well, Ricochet is a continuation of that, where it's just like when you give up and you just end it all. So that's Ricochet. It's kind of deep. Let's check yeah, it out. And that's deep for sure. The band is a band. Here we go. Continuation of Fade called Ricochet. I've almost got this Friends trivia ready. Man, that sauce is hot. Now, when you guys perform uh, like songs like Ricochet, Josh, are you doing every vocal or is there is there one of the other fellows doing the background screams in between the cleans i mean i i do the screams and the cleans yes uh obviously live for like overlays and stuff some things are backtracked uh, uh we currently don't have like a backing vocalist uh, we did for a little bit uh but that didn't work out so well for sure um, what song? What song is the hardest to play in your set? Not only from a vocal perspective, but from uh, guitar, drums. Just which one is like the most complicated? Maybe it took a little bit longer in practice to kind of just get it just right. For me, vocally, uh, just like nerves wise, was dial tone because it was just like it's such a like vocally driven song. There's really not a lot. Of going else like, right you know not a lot else going on in that song it's very vocally driven as far as like instrumentally i mean i can't really speak too much because these these guys are the you know the the actual musicians i'm just the singer uh <laughs> i would have to say he almost spit it out <laughs> i would have to say guitar <laughs> wise is fade 
and drum wise a thousand percent yesterday yesterday has some crazy drumming in it i was actually talking to o'neill about that today you guys would agree with with josh (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, that song was before me so yeah yeah fun fact fade was actually uh we had we actually did that song way before we released the first song (laughs) frontline (laughs) sometimes it just works out like that where yeah it it kind of gets it evolves until it's ready even though it's the first song it evolves and becomes like the fourth or fifth song released because it just wasn't ready yet at the time but uh have you guys ever considered uh like a big name feature on a track maybe and if so uh who have you considered i mean it depends on like how big you're talking we've done michael barr okay Uh, we recently worked with someone else that might be somewhat of a surprise uh but i mean i really wanted to work with uh keaton from too too close rest in peace uh telly from the word alive that would slide in nice i think ollie's ollie any any day just because it's, it's ollie right He's probably the most expensive of all of them, too, I would imagine. I mean, like, these are, like, big, big goals, like, and I'm thinking of someone who would, like, sound cool next to me. Can you uh, can you hold I, your hand to the screen while you're, I just want to see your ink on your hand right there, how it pours down to this your. This one? Yeah. How'd that feel? How'd that feel right up in this area of your finger? Right, right here? Yeah. That's not the bad part, dude. The bad part is usually like right in the center because they have to drop like so much ink there. Mm-hmm. And good God, it hurts. Like the shading is the word. I, like everyone who says, oh, the shading is nice. Like, you're fucking crazy. dude. I'm sorry if I can't curse, but you're absolutely insane. You can curse. Shading is so bad. I feel like the the white is what hurts the worst. Good God, you're not wrong. It's unnecessary too. It makes right, it pop, but it's like when you want the tattoo to be over and done with, they're like, no, we got to add the white. And sometimes they go back to the spot that they started like two or three hours ago. And you're like, no, no. Yeah, dude, if you're a tattoo artist and you're listening to this, you know, white ink is just absolutely <laughs> unnecessary. You do it for the torture and you know you do. Bastards. It's bastards. Oh, oh, no. Do you have any ink? You're muted. Yeah, I got one on my shoulder. Just one? Yeah. For sure. One, one, one unfinished one on my leg. All right, that's cool. I'm thinking I'm going to get another one yeah, probably no, next impressive. weekend. <laughs> next weekend or something. I got this spot saved right here for uh, my son's signature. And when he was, now he's able to like, he's six. Uh, and I was kind of waiting for him to just scribbly write his name. I'm just going to get that right there. But um, let's see. Well, let's say, let's say hypothetically world tour happens tomorrow. It's a 70 day a country, let's say 70 country world tour. What one country are you guys circling that is a little bit more exciting to go to than the others? Japan. Yes, great answer. Japan, Japan dude, hell yeah. Have you guys ever been to, to Japan or maybe even Europe at all? No, dude, we've never been out of the States. Not yeah. yet though. Not yet though, it's Not coming. Yet. It's yeah. coming, hell yeah. Uh, you never know, man. I do have some friends trivia ready to go, and I'm counting on you. Here we go. Okay, okay. How ready. many times? As of it just says as of 2002, so I don't know if that means this answer is wrong. But how many times has Ross been married? How many times has Ross been married on the show Friends? Three times. Three times is correct. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> well done. Hell yeah. See what your fate is, fellas. Oh, excellent. Smoke weed every day. I'm not sure if you guys are cannabis friendly. <laughs> I love this. But uh, if you are, you can you can definitely partake now. If not, it's totally cool. I understand. Um, let's play. Let's play one more song of yours. I know we're slightly limited to time, but uh, what what one song that we have not played yet? Uh, bonus points if it has Blood a music video. Blood in the water. Is there a music video? 
Uh, lyric video. Lyric video. Or is it a lyric video or a streaming video? I, lyric I can't. Video. The lyric video. I pull We've it up. just done so much stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, this is the one featuring Michael Barr. Cool. Yeah. How yeah. did that? How did that uh, feature come about? Like, how did you actually link up with him? <laughs> our, our band manager. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, you yeah. said that earlier. He's the manager. That's awesome. Okay, well, let's jam. Uh, let's jam blood in the water. I'm gonna rip this bong real quick and dive right back into it. But what what artists would you say? Let's rewind to like middle school, middle school time frame. What artists would you guys say individually? made you want to pick up drumsticks, made you want to pick up a guitar, made you want to pick up a microphone. And in particular, if there's a uh, certain album, drop the album for me too. Uh, I, drumming has been in my family since I was born. I had my, my grandpa still drums till this day. Um, but if it was the album, is the Phobia album by Breckin Benjamin. It really got me in, into it. Hell yeah. like, I, I would listen to that every night when I would go to sleep. Like, so you could probably much, play. You could probably play anything off of it. Just like it comes in instantly. my head. But yeah, like it, it, it would click. Yep. What about your in my sleep, man? It was, it was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, Teddy? Um, not in middle school. Like I'm in like a late bloomer when it comes to like when I picked up guitar and stuff, and like learned how to do music and stuff. It was only like a few years ago when I started this band. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, I, I, I picked up guitar because of Alessandra in high school. That's okay. why I decided to play. I, I, I wanted to play guitar because I wanted to learn on their songs, them and Asking Alexandria. I wanted to like just learn to play their, their songs on guitar. That's all I wanted to do. Did you wear in eyeliner high in high school? No, I was, I was a basic uh, emo kid, just long hair and uh, skinny jeans. I went through the, uh, the the hair straightener eyeliner phase myself. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what about for you, Josh? Oh man, middle school. Uh, yeah. So there was this band called Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yep. I remember uh, them. Back in the oh, day. I forgot about so that band. Uh, I wanted to sound just like their screamer. Everything about that band loved it. Dressed for friend requests all over that song uh so you you primarily started off as not really doing a lot of cleans cleans kind of came later is what you're saying cleans came when i joined this band really interesting (laughs) who do people mostly say that you sound like when when you when you sing say that again who do who do most people compare you to when they hear your your singing voice like is there another artist that they're always like oh you kind of sound like this guy I don't really, my cleans don't really get compared to anyone that I know of. Um, That's awesome. That, that's a compliment in itself, I'd say. I've heard, like, when I'm doing, like, my caveman, like, thingy, I've heard recently uh, thrice, but, like, I don't really take that because I don't think I'm that cool. <laughs> well, I think you're cool. So, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Thrice yeah. is like one of those bands to me. They can do no wrong. I've, I always, whenever people bring up Thrice, of course I'm familiar with them, but I always, I can't remember if I saw them at Warp Tour. I've probably been to like 10 Warp Tours. And I, one of the oldest first ones I ever went to, I feel like I saw Thrice and Finch at the same Warp Tour, but I could never remember what their sets were like. Um, who's, who's the local band that you guys have played with in the Texas area? that absolutely just blew you out of the water and you're like man you people got to know about these guys indigo indigo is there is there is there a, is there a song indigo. title do you know a song title of theirs losing game losing yeah, game indigo, they just that. released a song you got so you got to check out that breakdown bro that shit, shit hits is it is it's it uh, either one of these that i'm looking at uh indigo and yeah, ndgo yeah, yeah four, four letters. Gotcha. There it is. Oh, I'm already subscribed. But I've oh. not heard this song. Yeah, that's fire. We're going to put them in, too. That's fire. 
Fellas, we got time just for a, a couple more questions. What What's next for the band that you're allowed to tell me? I know there's some stuff that's secretive. It's, you know, pre-planned, blah, blah, blah. But what are you allowed to tell me that we can look forward to? Tour. Tour. Um, the tour. Tour. More <laughs> music. Because you got the tour with, with Attila coming up, right? Yeah, yes, sir. This We're, end of this month, like September 30th. Is it is it safe to say you're going to be playing a little bit of a heavier set for that tour, or is it the regular yeah. the regular bangers as usual? I mean, it's both. Sure. It's it's. I mean, it, it's going to be both because we're direct support, so it, we're going to be second. We're going to be right before them, so we we have a long set, so we got to like play most majority of all of our all music of our songs. That we have. Yeah, cool. Plus a new one. We're playing a new one, a brand new one that we just finished on the tour. We're not allowed to know what the name of the new one is, though. Um, oh, come on! I, I mean, I, you have to go to a show, to the show, to see, to to hear us call it out. Because we're gonna say, fair enough, fair tour. enough. Thought we had it. Be Thought we, I hit the breaking news button too, and there was it was a fail. We did not get the breaking news. <laughs> no worries, uh, <laughs> fellas. I got. To- I got time for one final question, but this is actually a really serious one. I ask every single guest I have on the show this final same question. What is a real piece of musical advice somebody has given you that impacted you, changed things a little bit, or a really bad mistake you made early on in your music career that you don't want any just starting out band to make? Mm. That's a very good, deep question. There's a lot. There's Be adaptable understand that this it's a business as well yes it's playing music and getting your fifis out and expressing yourself but there comes a point when you have to realize like okay like do i want to do this for a living or do i just want to do this and some people have to understand where they are on that spectrum. And if you want to do it for a living, it's not easy, dude. I'm letting you know. Uh, it's it's just as hard as trying to obtain any college degree or, you know, make it up to management at that job. Uh, harder, it's, dude. A lot it's harder. Investing, it's, it's investing, trusting in the process, understanding that things take time, um, learning how to work with people. I mean, just brotherhood adaptation. Yeah. It's a really good answer. Good advice for sure. Uh, so I'll go, I'll go opposite then for you, Teddy. What's, what's a terrible mistake you would say that not necessarily the band made, but something you would advise starting up bands to not do. Uh, don't release music without like a plan or a campaign plan or, or any type of, don't hot drop stuff and just expect people to listen to it and, and don't tell people to go stream my new song. Like no one, like the bottom line, no one really cares. You, you have to make people care and you got to find a way to convey that, like make, make, find a way to make people care about your, your music, make them connect to it. What, what you want to do with, with it. Like it's, a lot of people like just drop stuff without like a plan, and that's like one of the, probably like the worst thing you can do because you you could spend you know your your all your money and your heart and soul into a song that you think is like the best song ever, but it means nothing if no one listens to it. Valid point as well for sure. Oh no, oh no, send us out on uh, on just whatever you're feeling, dude. You've got some knowledge you want to drop. You want to plug something. Whatever you're gonna send us out, dude. Uh, I, I I guess what I would say is just don't ever give up, man. Like, uh, well, a lot of times we we the band and I talk about the gang, like it's crazy what we've done this far, and next thing you know we're doing more things, right? Like that just kind of happens, man. Like it's yeah. you have. I've been in so many bands myself. I I could talk about that all day, but you know, once you find the right people that actually care, you know, that care about, like he said, Josh said, it's, it's a business, and once you start treating it that way, and it's, everyone's on the same page, 
it kind of goes smooth sailing from there as far as like partnership. But put put in the hard work. Not giving up, man, is is huge. Like there's plenty of times where I said I want to like screw this. Like, <laughs> like we haven't done anything yet, or things are not going as planned, or. I get it. it. Makes sense, but you got to put in the hard work to get to receive the payoff in the end. Otherwise, <coughs> whatever the it's... case may be. Yeah. yeah, like I got a huge announcement actually coming up in the next week, dude, and I'm actually super excited for it. Well, so you're leaving with a cliffhanger. Man. It's a cliffhanger, so we got to wait a week for the yeah, announcement. Is what you're saying? I want to know. You got you got to follow me. Her. What's where can everybody follow you personally at? How can I? Can you drop in the chat for me, Teddy, or something? I'm I'm on my phone. Yeah, but we'll be sure to follow back for sure. My but, uh, Instagram is onel cyd. Hell yeah, we'll look out for the announcement. Congratulations on whatever it is. But uh, fellas, you guys are super cool, man. I appreciate you doing this, Josh. Thanks for hitting the hot sauce hard, dude. I think I saw you hit back like six, seven <laughs> drops of that thing. Well done. You guys are awesome, man. Your music's fantastic. Please don't be strangers. Stay safe on the road. I know Attila is going to try to break you and get you drunk <laughs> all, all the time, I oh, imagine. Yeah, Party yes, with those sir. fools. Tell them local band Smuggle says what's up. And uh, just you guys are super cool, man. You're welcome back whenever you like. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing this. Thanks, man. You too. Yeah, Thank you. Man. Ladies and gentlemen, catch your breath. Yeah, hell yeah. Please support them. Hit the follow button. They definitely deserve it. I'll see you guys. Thank you. Forever.